If you go to a New York hospital to visit a COVID risk patient, this is what they make you wear because they know how bad it can get. Wear a mask. In several of my band reviews, I have mentioned my penchant for going down musical rabbit holes, endlessly replaying one song for days on end. Indeed, it is rare that I will find a song I like and not immediately listen to it 15 or 30 times in a row. But this isn't some broadly applicable media consumption trait. I don't really reread books or rewatch TV shows, and despite my love of movies, I rarely see something more than twice. I never developed cinematic comfort food as a kid, and I wasn't one to let networks or even premium cable channels dictate my movie viewing habits. With the possible exception of Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins, which I ended up watching with a high school friend basically any time we were together and noticed that it was on HBO. But other than that, I don't think I've broken double digits. The two movies I have sought out most are Mad Max Fury Road and Joseph Kahn's Detention, each of which I've seen somewhere between seven and nine times. So I feel strange when I read articles or watch video essays or listen to podcasts where people talk about the movies that they have seen dozens or hundreds of times. Am I the weird one here for looking to new experiences instead of returning to old standbys? I know for a lot of people that quarantine has been a time to do the latter, but I've watched 66 movies since being sent home and only 13 have been repeats. Thank you to Letterboxd's CSV export function for that one. I honestly can't even imagine what it would be like to have seen something so many times. Or I couldn't until someone made a podcast about it. Hello everyone, anyone, and welcome to the Week I Review. You can call me continually disappointed in the state of this country. And today, I am talking about the worst idea of all time. The Worst Idea of All Time, or TWIAT, is a podcast hosted by New Zealand comedians Guy Montgomery and Tim Batt, wherein they watch the same movie a whole lot of times and then talk about it. And last Saturday, they hit a milestone when they had the live-streamed 100th episode celebration for The Friend Zone, an offshoot where they just talk and answer emails and the like. The main show hit 100 episodes quite a long time ago, but so what? Congratulations. My love affair with the show got real intense real fast. I found out about it on November 23rd, 2017. I don't know that because it will live in infamy or whatever. I just know that it's the day that the third episode of Till Death Do Us Blart, or Death Blart, was released. Death Blart is a podcast collaboration between the fellas behind The Worst Idea of All Time and the McElroy brothers, whose own list of projects is just ridiculous at this point. Oddly enough, despite me having listened to multiple McElroy shows at the time, I didn't learn about Death Blart from them. Rather, it was from the Facebook group for another other podcast, The Flophouse, that I had recently joined and whose user base was very excited about this third release. Death Blart is not the worst idea of all time, but it's a pretty bad one. The hosts have committed to watching Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 and recording a podcast about the experience once a year, every year, until they die. And already by episode 3, the McElroys were miserable, something that has only become more true in its fourth and fifth years. But Tim and Guy were a lot less bothered by the whole thing. And that makes sense, because the worst idea of all time is only a slight exaggeration. In its original conception, there was no end date for any given season of the show, though it was quickly decided that they would go on for a full year, or 52 watches. It's probably the case that there are films that would benefit from this sort of dedication, but Twyatt is a comedy podcast, so they decided to watch the 2013 classic Grown Ups 2, a movie I have not and will never see. And yet, I have spent far more time hearing these two guys talk about it than I would have just getting the damn thing over with. 
I came into it much later though. After Grown Ups 2, the boys came back for Sex in the City 2, having skipped the original and only a passing familiarity with its source material. After that, they went for Maximum Joseph's magnum opus, We Are Your Friends. And when I joined in, they were already at watch 58 of the 60 that they ultimately did for that film, as Tim had added an extra eight on as punishment at some point in the process. So I had a lot of catching up to do, especially since I learned that they would be doing a live show in Brooklyn just six days later at the Bell House. And how could I resist? I ended up being the first person there, grabbing a seat a full five minutes before the next person came in, which probably made me seem like a much more OG diehard fan than I actually was. Binging the worst idea of all time is weird, because it's inevitable that two people subjecting themselves to the same bit of media over and over again are gonna go a little mad, especially when it's something they may well dislike on the first watch and will certainly hate long before double digits. But listening to episodes in rapid succession really hammers home how draining an experience it is. And of course, this was completely foreseeable misery that they brought upon themselves. In the first season, there was perhaps some kind of novelty to the pain, but after that, they knew what they were in for. and. Yet they do it again, and the cycle begins anew. In the inaugural episode, Guy says that the point is to watch it every week until it becomes worthwhile. And while that's a joke, it's also kind of true, not for us, the listeners, but for them as the viewers. And I'm in it for their attempts to reach this cinematic nirvana. I don't care about any of these movies. They were specifically chosen because no one has any love for any of them and would never wish this sort of punishment on anyone. So just a matter of fact or even comedic breakdown of these movies that no one cares about any more than one time would be exhausting and frustrating. It is not about the generally bad films they're watching, it's about the men who chose to watch them. Which is really everything since social media came into being, right? Especially when it comes to podcasting or <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> some folks will come to this video because they're actually interested in hearing what someone, in this case I, have to say about the worst idea of all time. But there are also the folks who will watch because they want to crack open my skull and put my brain under a microscope. Something an ex of mine told me on more than one occasion that she wanted to do. I like Tim and Guy a lot. They have possibly my favorite dynamic of any pair of podcasters, with the only real competition being Mike Mitchell and Nick Weiger of the Doughboys, and those two have a very different sort of thing going. The fellas' affection for one another is infectious, and the fact that they so clearly like hanging out makes orally hanging out with them a lot more fun, and I also enjoy their accents. But it's not just hanging out, they have a mission, to watch a movie until it becomes worthwhile, which is some straight up Sisyphus shit. And so we listen as they roll the boulder up the hill week after week, and try to make the best of the fact that it keeps falling down. You know, there are a million self-help vlogs out there, but I think that you're going to gain a lot more from listening to these two grown men try to reckon with what they've done and their increasingly creative coping mechanisms. They develop little games, overanalyzing moments that no one ever thought about, like where an extra who gets up in a cafe and quickly leaves is actually going, or what could possibly be in a MacBook Pro box given as a gift, since no one ever sees the MacBook Pro taken out of the box. These force a measure of originality each week, and the answers become ever more outlandish and fun to us as the listeners. The centerpiece of the whole endeavor is the shining light, where each must come up with a moment that they actually enjoyed of every watch, no matter how much they hated it overall. It could be a scene, or a line reading, or an edit, or a piece of jewelry that an extra wears in one shot for a fraction of a second, but they have to come up with something. There has to be some kind of moment to latch onto. Now look, not every single bad situation in life has a shining light, but most of them do. And finding that is always a worthwhile endeavor, and listening to these two find theirs is a key part of what makes the podcast so effective. 
A few days ago, when I should have been working on this review and trying to get back into some sort of normal schedule, I rewatched Bo Burnham's Make Happy on Netflix. It's interesting for me to remember that I was almost at the taping for that show, and I'm very glad that I wasn't because the mindset that I was in in December 2015 was bad. <laughs> In the throes of my actual quarter-life crisis, the specific targets of comedy found in some of those songs would have hit me in exactly the wrong way. But after that, it is possibly my favorite special of all time. I really like comedy that takes the form of clever people working through things. It's why Daniel Sloss is the single most discussed subject on this channel, and I think that the worst idea of all time fits into that mold albeit in a much sillier way. There are no real stakes, but the subject of the podcast is an obstacle to be overcome, and they have to overcome that, and we're there rooting for them on the sidelines. And as time has passed, they've begun playing with the form. There was an idea for a YouTube Red show back in the day, where they would do so-called method film reviews. The pilot, which is available to watch but sadly didn't result in a series order, saw them sleeping in New York City's sewers for five days and watching and reviewing Michael Bay's Ninja Turtles reboot 15 times. Season 4 changed things up because they watched the original Sex in the City, the movie, twice a week instead of once. And since then, they've had a couple of mini arcs, My Week with Cats, where they saw Tom Hooper's beautiful abomination every day for a week, and Do More, where they watched the new Doolittle three times in a row, recording a quick episode in between each viewing and then heading right back into the theater. And the just announced fifth season has something in common with their spin-off Overlooked and Undercooked, where the two broke down the apparently awful Netflix show Real Rob episode by episode. Season five will be not one movie 50-ish times, but one character's 50-ish films one time each. And look, I sure as heck won't be watching any of the Emmanuel films but I will just as surely be there while Tim and Guy do. 8.5 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you particularly to my patrons, my mom, Hamry and Marco, Kat Saracata, Benjamin Schiff, Anthony Cole, at Blasian FMA, Magnolia Denton, Elliot Fowler, and Greg Lucina. If you like this video, that's great. If not, I'm sorry. If you want to see more, please subscribe. I hope to see you next week.